Hey, welcome back. In this video, I wanna talk about secondary constraints. I wanna talk about constraints and I wanna explore what secondary constraints can do for us in Primavera P6. If you're ready, let's dive in. So a little bit of review to start. Star constraints and finish constraints. Let's just talk about them really briefly because if you're not using them every day, then you might have forgotten the different kinds. In fact, there are three star constraints. We've got start on. Start on really fix the start date to one particular date with no movement. We've got start on or after. As you can see, start on this date or later is okay. So it starts this kind of date range starting from a particular point. And then we have start on or before, which does just the opposite start before this, any time before this particular date. So creating a date range on the other side. So those are the three star constraints. And similarly, you won't be too surprised that there are three finish constraints, the exact same. So finish on, finish on a particular date exactly, finish on or after, so from this date and a bit of a finish date range after, or finish on this date or any time before. So those are our three kinds. But this video is about secondary constraints. When we combine both a primary constraint, the ones that we just reviewed, with a secondary constraint, that means a second constraint on the same activity, in P6 we can have a combination of those two to set some ranges. So ranges either for start dates, or ranges for finish dates, or ranges for start and finish dates. So we have a lot of flexibility with primary constraints and then adding the secondary constraint element gives us a whole bunch more. So let's go into P6 and doodle around and see what they do. All right, so I've got a very simple schedule here with uh, a clear critical path and then activity F that's got 20 days of float. Now, where's my secondary constraint that I'm talking about? Well, here's the primary drop down with some of those constraints we saw on the slide. And then here's the secondary. So notice the secondary is grayed out usually unless you apply a primary. So let's go and explore some combinations of these two. So what's a combination we might use? So we might say start on, actually, yeah, start on. But notice when I pick a start on, secondary still is grayed out. So I can't use it with start on or finish on. I can only use it with the other ones that provide more of a range. So start on or after, or start on or before. So let's pick start on or after for this activity. So it's already starting on March 30th. Let's push it into the future a little bit. So March 30th, let's start it uh, a couple days later on April the 2nd. So I'm gonna push this activity into the future. Let's reschedule and see that happen. So there it goes it moved to April 2nd. Now in the secondary dropdown, I have two options. I can apply a finish constraint to constrain where the finish will be, or I can further constrain the start date. And let's look at that option first. So if I further constrain the start date, I can say start on or before. So I can set a range for my start date. I can be in, these, in between these two dates that I specify. Start on or after April 2nd, or start on or before, and let's pick a date there. Let's say April 8th. Here is my total float, 17 days. Watch what happens when I reschedule. My total float goes down to four days. And that's because of this secondary constraint. The secondary constraint has forced us to uh, use up some of that float or erase some of that float by setting this range. See how that happens? So now I'm still starting on April 2nd, but I can start as late as the 8th. Let's force it outside of that range to see what happens. So if I go to activity A and I put 20 day activity, this should force things to be out of that range. So that pushes the whole project into the future. And you can see, because I am starting well uh, outside of the range of the second to the eighth, I now have eight days of negative float here. So as we've seen in other videos, you can go check out some of the other constraint videos I've done. 
If you are outside of the range that your constraint provides, you end up with negative float. And negative float is the indicator on constraint activities that you are no longer, you've broken the constraint. This is when you're using soft constraints. Hard constraints, go check out some of those other videos to get a review on that. Okay, let's do just the opposite. What if we do a finish on or before? So let's finish on or before April 3rd is our current finish date. Let's give ourselves a little bit more leniency. Let's go to the 10th. So we can finish on the 10th or earlier. And what does my secondary constraint allow me to do? It allows me to set another range or constrain that range for finish dates, finish on or after. So this is actually, this is a bit weird, but I have the last finish date in the primary field and the first finish date in the secondary field. And they can be interchangeable. So either one's the primary constraint or the secondary constraint. It doesn't matter. So in this case, we will say finish on or after, let's pick a date like the 7th. So I've provided a range between the 7th or the 10th. And when I reschedule my project, I can see that my total float went down to three days. It was 20 days and now it's three days because I've provided that range. Okay, let's reset one more time. Okay, so let's look at the last scenario, which would be to combine a start constraint with a finish constraint. So we could do a start on or after constraint as our primary constraint. So start on, let's again pick a date into the future a little bit. Let's go to the seventh. And in our secondary dropdown, we could say finish on or before. Well, before we apply that, let's reschedule just so we see what our options are. So if I start on the seventh, Right now, it will finish on the 13th. Maybe, let's try something here for fun. What if I finish on or before a date earlier than the 13th? Let's say the 10th. Once again, I have some negative float, okay? So I did this on purpose. I wanted to see the effect of breaking one of these constraints. I am starting on April 7th but I'm not finishing on or before the 10th, I'm finishing on the 13th. So I've broken this constraint and I have negative float to show for it. So what can we glean from all of this? When we combine uh, two constraints, the primary and the secondary in P6, we can either provide a range for start dates, a range for finish dates, or a range for both start and finish dates. Okay, how important is this to you? Should we be using these? I would say there are some situations where this would come in handy. In particular, the last option of using a start and finish date constraint. If you did want to limit, say, an interim milestone where uh, you wanted to finish on a particular date with some leniency in this date range, I think it would work really well in that situation. There may also be times when this is overkill, but I did want to have a discussion about how these work and whether you can find some creative ways to use them in your scheduling. So with that, that's all I got for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you got some value from this video. And I'm Michael, I'll see you again. Happy planning.